Hello, good morning. Let's do sports now on New Day. My name is Yao Ofosulabi, and you know every Monday morning uh, we do a discussion of uh, the major events over the weekend. And in the Ghana Premier League, the biggest talking point is that the West African Football Academy were at uh, home in Sugakope. They defeated Ashanti Gold Football Club by six goals to one. That's an incredible scoreline there from the Wafa guys. The first time they've recorded uh, such a huge margin uh, over uh, Ashanti Gold there. Remember they beat uh, Sekendi Hazakis in 2015 by four goals to one. They beat them again in uh, 2016 by another four goals to zero. They beat Accra Hatsafo by five goals to zero. And this time around, it was a turn of Ashanti Gold where they beat them by six goals to one. We'll be uh, checking out the results also from that Accra Hatsafo Elmina Sharks game. It ended 1 1 at the Accra Sports Stadium. Kumasia Santikotoko also beats Bechim United by three goals to one. They were at home at the Accra Sports Stadium where uh, they've adopted as their new home for. Uh, the next few weeks. Also, uh, coming up this morning, we'll be talking about Liverpool's loss. They lost to Watford by three goals to zero, three unanswered goals, and it took uh, their, their unbeaten run to 44 games unbeaten, and that's how many games that Liverpool have gone without a loss. And it's been 632 days, and then they've lost just twice within that period. That's an incredible one there for Jurgen Klopp. I mean, Liverpool will still win the league, but they wanted to do it in style by not losing a game. They lost to Watford. And so uh, the Arsenal Invincible team of 2004 still have their record intact. We'll also be talking about a classical from yesterday. Real Madrid taking on Barcelona and beating them by uh, two goals to zero. But the major talking point is that ever since Cristiano Ronaldo left the La Liga, Lionel Messi has never scored in, a, in an El Clasico game since. We'll be talking about this pretty shortly, but in the, uh, joining me in the studio to talk about this is my colleague Thierry Nyan, and uh, Thierry joins me every Monday morning to do this. Now, Thierry, let's start from the Ghana Premier League. 6 1, Ash Gold against Wafa. <laughs> was that a surprising scoreline for you? Ash Gold um, league leaders. Okay, so, so it, it was surprising in, in, in one context, not surprising in another context. Now, it was surprising because Wafa have not been too solid at home this season. Um, I did not expect them, especially playing against. A title hopeful like Ashanti Gold, I, I don't expect them to have such a huge scoreline, um, you know, at home. And it's clear because Wafa have struggled at home. Remember, they played against Hearts of Folk, they drew, um, they played against uh, Kotoko, they did not find the win. And you know, when, when you look at when you look at those games, it, it gives you a certain um, you know line to toe. It tells you that Wafa are not exactly as influential or as 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 devastating as they were in previous previous um, you know seasons yeah. now this particular one was a statement and mm -hmm. i think it's a statement that is best served to waffle themselves right. not to any other team right. it is not a statement that would put fear in any other side going to waffle of course the, the the knowledge is that if you go there you definitely can record a, a huge defeat like that but mm -hmm. The reason I'm saying it's a statement to Wafa themselves is that it's the consistency after this that is important. Mm -hmm. Remember, Wafa have had huge score lines, like you've mentioned, against the Bissau against Hart of Folk. Now, yeah. this matches um, the exact score line they had against, um, in terms of goal difference, that yeah. they had against Hart of Folk, 5-0 yeah. uh, goal difference. Now, thing here is, if they are able to maintain this momentum going forward, mm -hmm. now, imagine if Wafa were able to um, not just intimidate the opponents, but actually able to record uh, you know victories as huge as this uh, you know consistently at home, at home. Right. they would definitely be among the, the you know the title hopefuls every single season right but the story is different and the reason is they are very inconsistent right well uh, you heard that from Thierry now the, uh, his position on Wafa now let's just go now to the Cape Coast Stadium and watch the highlights of the Ibu Swadrofs and Inter Allies football match Lovely play here is Amaz. Amaz with the power drive. Good save from goalkeeper. Lovely spin around his man and all over the place. Nobody close in on him. So much space to play as far as Richard Aqua. At the bio. Asking so many right in front of him. He's just about to dip. Finds opportunity. Who sends the cross in? Cleared away by Asinki. The skipper. At the bio. Repelled by goalkeeper Razak Isa. Yeah, Abanga looked like he was the one going to step in here. Adebayo just. Adebayo! Good save. Adebayo again over the top. Still here. Samuel Ama. It's Ama against Bodo. Adebayo! That was close. He took it by the substitute who just got on entry. Sprinting down the right. Lovely skill from Ishmael. Tries the shot. Goal kick. So what was his one? Dennis Costa's free kick. Oh, how did he miss? And just puts 
Chibua off a bit. Take a look at that. Also, brilliant ball into that area. Three of them, two of them actually going for that. And it's Abuna about finally gets his head on that header. But Chibua was in a bit. So you saw that game there, really exciting game, but it ended 0-0 uh, in the uh, a mix of goalkeeping saves and also some very unpardonable misses in that game. Thierry, what do you make of it? Um, to well, I would not blame the forwards. I think they did their bet. Um, credit to the goalkeepers to stop some of those you know, balls going in. Mm -hmm. um, it, it tells you um, of the kind of quality that we have in the Ghana Premier League this season. I think that the coverage of it by Star Times has also helped right. for us to you know, appreciate the league even better. Right. And the reason is we are, we are getting to see a lot of the action mm -hmm. and that is making us uh, um, you know, now notice a lot of the things that a lot of these chaps used to do in the past, but yeah. just was not covered well. Right. Um, enough of that. In the game itself, I think Inter Allies are relying too much on Victoria and Adebayo, and mm. you, you can tell about 80% of the chances they had there, you know, came through with Victoria. And either he was the one shooting or he was the one creating. And it tells you, you cannot be overly reliant on a single player and expect to succeed. Right. And the reason they are where they are in the league table. Let's talk about Kotoko now. On Friday evening, they beat Bishop United by three goals yeah. to one. It was a good one for them. Two, two losses on the bounce. And then they, they answered with a win at, at a cross ball stadium. Does that take pressure off Max Okunedu? Um, well, it does. And I think it does in a, in a good way. Um, remember, Kotoko have struggled um, the last few games. They had, only, they had recorded only one win in the last uh, five or six games. Mm -hmm. And so coming into this one, they knew they had to win. Right. But the magic they are working at Accra Sports Stadium is, is an even bigger story. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that their best wins have all come at Accra Sports Stadium. Remember, right. they won against Hato Folk. Um, they also won against uh, Legon Cities. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I think, a 3-0 victory, yeah. plus this one. And it, it is only telling one simple story. Mm -hmm. Kotoko are becoming very comfortable at Accra Sports Stadium. And that would be a very good omen for them, mm -hmm. especially as the Babayara Sports Stadium has not been um, fully renovated as it is. Right. And so they are going to be making Accra their home for some time. Okay. And if they're able to churn out good results as these going forward, then definitely it's it's bad news for uh, the other title candidates. But for Max Okunedu, he knew he had to win this one. It was never an easy game, but he knew he had to win. And he had to win because of one simple reason. Because the results in the last five, six games have been poor. Imagine if Kotoko had won all those games. They definitely have been top of the table with a bit of freedom and a bit of um, some breathing space mm -hmm. um, you know, to operate in. But that has not been the story. And for, for Max Okunedu, with the pedigree he has in, in, in Ghana football as a coach, mm -hmm. he knows that he has to win something with Kotoko. Right. He's already out of the FA, FA Cup. Cup. So the pressure... On, on him to win the league mm -hmm. is even huge right. um, as it is now. Yeah, 